the publicans and sinners drew near unto Jesus to hear him, and the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are in the octave of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And today's Gospel tells about God's great mercy upon sinners. We see how sinners were rushing to hear Jesus speak. And they did this because they knew that our Lord was filled with truth, mercy, and forgiveness. And he would gladly leave the 99 sheep and go after even one lost sheep. Besides of those who loved him, the Gospel also tells about our Lord's enemies, the Pharisees, who liked to boast that they were better than others. The common crowd were locked upon by them, the Pharisees, as sinners. This was because the Pharisees were observing the law scrupulously and branded everyone who failed to do so as sinners. The parable of the lost coin also shows that Jesus had great concern for the women of his time. And have you ever noticed that while the Gospels present the apostles as weak and fragile men, and one of them even became a traitor, no woman was ever counted as being one of Christ's enemies. Instead, women were the most loving and faithful followers our Lord ever had. In today's Gospel, the publicans, sinners, and women are specially shown as being loved by Jesus. The 99 sheep, on the other hand, seem to come off little badly. But Jesus was making his point against the Pharisees. God loves sinners, and he seeks them out and saves them. If you are blessed to be among the 99 sheep, in other words, you are safely within God's sheepfold, the Catholic Church. You must guard your heart against all Phariseeism. Your heart must be like that of the heart of Jesus. A person with a Pharisaical heart shows displeasure and hostility. He finds himself thrown among the difficult or unpleasant people with whom he has to live. The difficult person might be the boss in an office, a spouse or relative who lives in the same house, or just a close neighbor. For example, a husband might say, my wife is a wonderful spouse, but she talks too much. If she is so wonderful a wife, why would you complain at the fact that she talks too much? Or a wife might say when she is with her friends something like, my husband is a good man and a great father, but he's lazy at home. Again, if your husband is such a great guy, why bring up his laziness at all? 
or a child might have a little brother or sister who's obnoxious and irritating, and he complains, why can't he just leave me alone? If we want to have a Christ-like heart, we can never have a judgmental heart like this. In the sacred scriptures, we read, My son, give me thy heart. So how does your heart appear compared to that of Christ? A true Christ-like heart avoids harsh and hasty judgments. You must learn to live with ease and in peace with your neighbor and look into your own heart because only God can see into the heart of your neighbor. If you are complaining that your wife talks too much, maybe she does that because you never answer her and she would need company. Or if you complain that your husband is lazy, maybe he has very stressing time at work, and when he finally gets home at night, he would just need some peace and rest. Or if your little brother or sister gives you not a moment's peace, Maybe he does it because, as a younger one in the family, he feels lonely. And if you would be charitable and play with him, at least from time to time, maybe he wouldn't need constantly crave after attention. You see, in the heart of a Pharisee, there is bitterness and selfishness. If you want to have a heart like Jesus, you must have a heart which is humble and patient, understanding your own frailty and shortcomings, as well as carrying the frailties and shortcomings of others. One of my favorite saints is St. Thomas Villanova, a Spanish bishop in the 1500s. He had a Christ-like, sweet heart. He was always thinking the best of everyone, and he was even criticized because he refused to be harsh or quick in correcting sinners. Once at a reception, our saint spotted a man who was living a sinful life. St. Thomas Villanova took the man aside and very gently gave advice, telling him that he really should clean up his act. And the man angrily insulted him and furiously stormed out of the room to the horror of the bishop's court. But St. Thomas calmly said, it was my fault. I should not have corrected him so roughly. He would never permit anyone to criticize someone absent. Whenever someone tried to talk bad about a person, St. Thomas would say, I'm sure that person had perfectly good intention to act exactly in the manner he did. In his famous hymn for charity, St. Paul writes, Charity is patient, is kind. Charity feels no envy. Charity is never perverse or proud, never insolent, does not claim its rights, cannot be provoked, 
does not brood over an injury, takes no pleasure in wrongdoing, but rejoices at the victory of truth, sustains, believes, hopes, endures to the last. That is the best possible explanation how a charitable, a Christ-like heart thinks and acts. If you have a Christ-like heart, you are benevolent and unselfish. You want good for others. You wish them well and do good to them. When St. Paul writes that charity sustains all, believes all, and hopes all, he says not that it excuses all things. Of course, charity can never call evil good. But a charitable heart is ready to ignore in silence the faults of one's neighbors, even if they are very irritating. In the spirit of Christ's prayer, Father, forgive them. You can know your catechism through and through, and memorize every jot and tittle of the canon law. But if your heart is void of charity, you, in the words of St. Paul, are nothing. I often try to remind our school children that it is not enough just to believe. You must also act according to your belief and you cannot be a faithful follower of Christ if you think or say ill of your neighbor. I wish to say a few words about Bishop Dolan, how great and loving heart he had. For the benefit of our internet congregation, Bishop Dolan is our former pastor who died two years ago. All of you who are longtime attendants at St. Gertrude the Great, you remember what a faithful teacher of the Catholic truth he was, and you remember what a shock it was to lose him so suddenly. Nevertheless, we still have many other faithful bishops and priests who teach the faith to you and your children. But it is Bishop Dolan's great and loving heart, his friendly words, his smile and laughter, and his commitment to us and to our families, what we miss so much. And those of you who are parents, Make sure that your children do not forget him. Though it's been only two years since he died, two years is an eternity in the life of a child. If we love Bishop Dolan and are truly grateful to him for all he did, we can never stop praying for him. Charity accompanies all the works of the Almighty God, and it must accompany the works of all the followers of Christ, too. The heart of a Pharisee is filled with anger and bitterness, but a Christ-like heart is filled with patience, meekness, and charity, and also love to one's neighbor, including his shortcomings. Charity is unconditional. It can never say that you love someone despite his faults. If you ever catch yourself saying that you love someone despite of something, 
it is exactly this despite of you must learn to live with and live with him in charity and love. I sometimes wonder the attitude of some people who think that charity, patience, forgiving and forgetting injuries are somehow signs of weakness. Whoever was more humble, loving, and forgiven than Christ, and whoever had more power and authority than Christ. But still, no matter how much power or authority you have, or you think you have, life brings everyone to his knees sooner or later. And he is fortunate who knows where to ask for help. The answer where the help is found was given not by the learned Pharisees, but by publicans and sinners. We find love, forgiveness, and mercy in the loving, sacred heart of Jesus. And if we want to follow Jesus, our hearts must be like his heart, loving, patient, and always forgiving and forgetting all injuries. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.